Okay, let's talk a little bit about testing because there are some very predictable tests that can be done that will help your doctor make a diagnosis of IC. Number one, your doctor's always going to do urine cultures, probably a lot of urine cultures to rule out bacterial infections and perhaps even some sexually transmitted diseases. Don't be offended, just let them do it because it's a lot easier to treat an infection than it can be to treat IC. So let them rule that easy stuff out. Now in the old days, a diagnosis of IC and testing was pretty aggressive, but we now have better, kind of newer, less traumatic tests that are available. So one of the first things that some doctors like to do is they can give you a questionnaire called the PUFF questionnaire. It's a quick five minute survey that will ask you questions about when your pain happens or when your symptoms happen and can help your doctor kind of isolate the bladder as a potentially the source of your problem and also rule out some other diseases. Quick five minute survey, come on, what could be easier? Now the second thing that some doctors like to do is something called a potassium sensitivity test. Now this is a very quick five minute test and the theory behind it is if you put salt on a wound, it usually hurts. So if they put a salt solution in the bladder and your bladder wall is not healthy, it should hurt. And that's exactly what they do. They put water in your bladder and then they put a little salt solution in your bladder. And if you start having symptoms from the salt solution, we can kind of de facto say that your bladder lining is not healthy and could be the source of the problem. But, you know, there's some controversy around the potassium sensitivity test. Quite a few doctors don't like to do it. And there's actually another easier test that can be done than that that doesn't involve pain. Instead, it involves numbing the bladder. And that is the anesthetic cocktail that Dr. Robert Moldwin uses. Um, and the theory behind that is, hey, if we put a lidocaine or a numbing agent in the bladder and it turns off your pain, then we can say, hey, then the bladder wall is the source of your pain. So some doctors like to do that instead. Now, Another test that is frequently performed that I personally don't think you need to be afraid of is a normal, simple cystoscopy. This is a quick five minute examination of your bladder wall. What they do is they get you up on the table, they numb your urethra with a little lidocaine solution, they stick a little cystoscope in, it's an instrument that's about this long, they take a look at your bladder, pull it out, you're done. And yes, the first couple of times you urinate after you have that procedure done is going to be uncomfortable in your urethra because your urethra has been stretched, but it allows your doctor to visualize your bladder wall to rule out other things. I've had two of them. I would definitely do it again. And, it, you know, it just kind of reduces your stress and anxiety levels when he, when he looks in and goes, oh, look that we don't really see anything aggressive. That's good news. You know, most IC patients have completely normal cystoscopies. I mean, I certainly did, and there's no doubt that I'm an IC patient. Now, I wanna take a moment and talk a little bit about bladder cancer, because most IC patients think about that at some point in time. I mean, I certainly did. My pain was so intense. I was just naturally going, oh my God, could it be the big C? And, and of course, there's no relationship between IC and cancer at all. There's none. You can let that worry go, unless of course you're a smoker. The number one cause of bladder cancer is cigarette smoking. If you're worried about bladder cancer, just be proactive and tell your doctor and ask him to rule it out. They can normally do a very quick urine cytology test, and if that comes back negative, then you can certainly let that worry go. Now the big elephant in the room when it comes to diagnosis is an older test called a hydrodistension with cystoscopy. And basically what this involves is uh, you being in the operating room, they, you, you are under full anesthesia, they uh, st stretch your bladder with a water solution, so they fill up your bladder with water and then they overfill it a little bit to stretch it, they hold it in there, drain it out, maybe do it a second time. And then that allows them to take a very close look at the bladder wall. Of course, the challenge with that test is it is certainly aggressive and it is certainly provocative to the bladder. 
you spend any time in support groups, you, you usually find one or two patients who were very traumatized by that procedure. Some people can walk out of that procedure and go to, out to dinner. Other people walk out, at, walk out of that procedure in a, in a very big flare that will last for a couple of weeks. Um, in the old days, it was done as a high pressure, long duration test. In other words, they thought back then, the more the better. But now, um, with the new AUA 2010 guidelines that were released last June, um, where they're now recommending a low pressure, short duration hydrodistension if your doctor wants to take a closer look at your bladder. Now, you know, there are pros and cons. You can certainly read more about that on our website. I want to recommend a book to you, which of course I've recommended in many videos. It's called The IC Survival Guide by Robert Muldwin. This is the book that absolutely has the best discussion of diagnostic methods. It talks about the tests that are done, the side effects, what they're trying to do. You can't go wrong getting this book and learning about it in this. So to summarize, don't get hung up with a word. Okay, uh, If the doctor doesn't want to call it IC, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Uh, just focus on your symptoms. Doctor, what can I do to improve my frequency? The second thing you want to do is be really crystal clear with your symptoms as you work with your doctor. Don't hide anything. Tell them what you're going through. Even the little weird unusual things, like if you have a little nerve twitch or anything like that, just get it out. Be fully honest about that. Um, testing should not be feared because testing can ease your anxieties and worries. You just need to learn about them. So, you know, many clinics like to start with the really easy test first. They might not even do any tests other than tell you to modify your diet for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. See how you do. And if you respond to that, then that's a good sign. But if after a certain period of time you're not responding, then they might want to do slightly more invasive tests. And at some point in time, they might want to do a hydrodistension to take a closer look if you don't seem to be improving. As always, please come visit our website at www.ic-network.com if you're looking for any additional info.